Driver 1 opened with that car park mission that ripped apart families and destroyed relationships with the difficulty brick wall it crashed you into. This mission is often referred to as a tutorial. Half of the internet stories about Driver 1 reminisce about not even being able to beat its tutorial, but this isn't a tutorial. Driver has a tutorial, you can access it from the main menu, but this isn't it. This level is instead a test. It's an homage to a scene from the film The Driver, which, you know, maybe is stretching a little past being an homage at some point, where the protagonist of that film, or rather where you playing this game, have to prove yourself as a good enough wheelman for the job. I don't care if you don't know what a slalom is, figure it out. Driver 2 and 3 also open jarringly. You get in chases and drive across the city and no punches are pulled when it comes to difficulty. Uh, these three games just jump right into it. There's no attempt to onboard you with a ramping difficulty curve or an opening tutorial. They're more than willing to alienate some players in favor of setting a tone, kicking off a pace, and supporting the story, which stars a wheelman who has to drive to near perfection. You are the wheelman, drive like one. If you hang out on a lot of nerdy online forums or with a lot of nerdy people, you'll, you'll hear that a game really gets good after the first five hours, or it truly starts after you spend a day learning the mechanics and getting used to the exposition, but Driver just skips all of that. Uh, we're throwing you in the middle of it, try your best, and we'll trust you to figure it all out. It's a bold tactic that doesn't click with everyone, as evidenced by the reactions to that car park mission, and it clearly only works with Driver because these are mechanically simple driving games rather than grand complex RPGs or anything like that, but still, it's a compelling way to set the stage, and it's refreshing to just get thrown in the middle of the action where many games would rather force you to take baby steps. Which brings us to Driver Parallel Lines, the fourth mainline game in the series, and the first one that forces you to take baby steps. A particularly bland shooting tutorial about 20 minutes into the game sticks out and feels like it takes far longer than the few minutes required to complete it. Earlier Driver games started with a bang, and Parallel Lines starts with a fizzle. David Bowie's Suffragette City, one way or another by Blondie, and a gluttony of other 70s hits do a fantastic job of smoothing over the opening moments, and the charm of these songs will carry you through the hand-holding boredom of locking onto each one of those barrels to progress, but for all the previous Driver games' flaws, boring is far from a word you'd use to describe them. Frustrating, absolutely, but they're so tightly structured that there's never a dull moment. For the first time, a driver game is concerned with easing its players in, with being widely palatable, and it's hard not to sound like a gatekeeping Souls fan here, but it absolutely loses something in the process. Uh, pace aside, the biggest sacrifice is related to the tone of it all. Like, basically everything Driver 3 tried was in service of removing the barrier between you and it, whether it was avoiding using arcadey graphics, or never breaking the fourth wall, or pushing the technical fidelity bar, or forcing you to play like a skilled driver right from the starting line. Like, sure, Driver 3 is still a silly game with silly set pieces, but it was wholly committed to keeping it grounded. Driver Parallel Lines, on the other hand, swings the pendulum entirely in the other direction and embraces being a video gamey video game. Big yellow stars litter the map as collectibles, tall transparent cylinders mark objectives, giant icons float above buildings, in-game character models have these goofy lizard-like proportions and animations which is made extra weird by them being realistic in the cutscenes, and for the first time in the series, crashing into poles simply pops them out of the ground and you glide straight through like you would in most other open world games. This might not sound like a big deal, but it's a pretty key change that reflects Parallel Lines' new philosophy. Like, one of the first things you notice about older driver games is how the poles just stop you in your tracks. It's all more palatable, and it's all less realistic. Uh, even the signature driving physics are adjusted to be lighter and easier to control, like no longer do you feel like you're constantly fighting to stay on the road. It's, it's still that distinct tail out drifting to some extent, and it's still enjoyable, but you're not as likely to spin out or flip over. In previous driver games, you'd make your way through a sequential list of missions one by one without any time to muck around. No finding collectibles or finding mission starting points, you'd just finish a mission, watch a cutscene, and immediately start the next one. 
Parallel Lines, it does the opposite. It, it adopts the Grand Theft Auto structure that everyone's familiar with, where in between missions you can muck around, get in police chases, and do side missions to earn money to upgrade your cars with a new customization system. Again, it's a very video gamey video game. Alongside this clear switch in focus, a lot of other things that were identifiably driver have been stripped away in parallel lines, with maybe the most tragic removal being the super in-depth replay editor, a cornerstone of this series so far. Uh, Detective Tanner has made way for a new protagonist named TK, or The Kid, or Terry Kid if you look real close at an easter egg on a blurry computer screen near the end of the game. What's more is, Production values and fidelity are a step down from Driver 3 too. Car damage models are simplified, there's no celebrity voice casting anymore, there's no boats or swimming or even jumping anymore, and New York, while bigger than Driver 3's three cities, reuses buildings everywhere, and each area is nowhere near as distinct or frankly as interesting. It's, it's all very flat. We're a far cry from Driver 3's 70 billion unique modelled buildings or whatever it was. There's fewer interiors, there's less cool stuff to find, and it all simply doesn't look as nice. The colours are washed out and they opted for a day-night cycle, sacrificing the baked-in lighting, colour palettes and skyboxes that Driver 3 had. The game was developed within a far shorter time period, and where Driver 3 had an enormous hype cycle and marketing campaign, Parallel Lines quietly appeared on shelves in 2006 as a late release for the PS2 and Xbox. Now look, Atari and Reflections, the publisher and developer, clearly had to do something after the catastrophe that was Driver 3. Uh, Driver 3 casts a long shadow, and reading into the Parallel Lines developer interviews, they're all basically apologising for Driver 3. They stress that Driver 3 was too ambitious, that they did an extensive post-mortem on it, that they tried to cut and change everything that didn't work, that Parallel Lines, while it has on-foot combat, is more focused on the driving this time because we all know how much you hated the combat in 3. Uh, as much as I personally love to wax lyrical about 3, it did become the butt of jokes, and though it sold well, it didn't sell well enough for Atari. If Driver 3 flew too close to the sun, Driver Parallel Lines does everything it can to avoid going near it. The shift in focus was led by a new creative lead, uh, Martin Edmondson's brother Gareth Edmondson took over from him, while Martin was busy suing Atari for unfair dismissal, which is the most unsurprising thing ever considering what was mid-2000s Atari. And so Driver Parallel Lines comfortably reaches its much more achievable goal of being a more approachable open world action game, I say with an air of disappointment. Uh, there's no more laughably broken moments, there's no more terrible pop-in, there's no more extreme frustration. The on-foot combat, while more clunky in a way, has been simplified with a not great but far more controllable lock-on system and there is indeed less of it. Glide straight through those traffic poles, we want you to have a smooth experience and we'll do everything we can to make sure you're enjoying yourself. Driver Parallel Lines gets down on its knees and begs you to like it. And you probably will, at least to some extent. It's still satisfying pulling last second 90 degree drifts everywhere, and there's a new traffic density slider which I love to crank to the max and weave around with the bumper cam. Uh, the traffic is way heavier than previous games, which helps keep the driving engaging despite the lighter physics and pop-out poles, as does the higher top speeds and the better sense of speed. Uh, a new wanted system, which separates both you and your car's wanted meters, is fairly neat as it allows you to hide and ditch cars to lose the cops, but my favourite new mechanic is shooting out the window while driving, something that Driver 3's box art suggested you could do, but you actually couldn't. That always annoyed me. Does that count as false advertising? You can only shoot in front of you, which means to shoot behind you, you have to pull the handbrake, whip a 180, pretend you're Vin Diesel, flick into reverse, and shoot your pursuers while trying not to crash. It's awesome, and all the mechanics harmonise in a way here that's incredibly satisfying. 
Uh, I've seen reviews criticize the shooting out the window for not allowing you to shoot backwards, so I guess those reviewers never thought to do this because limiting the mechanic to only shoot forwards serves to make it much more involved. Mission design is sadly rarely inspiring. It's, it's usually just basic go to the place or get in a car chase. They're barely a step above the side missions when it comes to inventiveness. So it's a good thing then that the driving itself feels good enough to mask that. Uh, also, when you plug these driving mechanics into the circuit racing side missions, it really just doesn't work. Like, have fun trying to follow a racing line with these slippery driver physics. Beyond the driving, Parallel Lines leans massively on its storytelling and especially its soundtrack, both of which follow the same design philosophy of really desperately wanting you to like them. Uh, Driver 3 picked a handful of obscure, moody, alternative songs that you've never heard of, so hey, thanks for putting up with those. Here's some widely loved 70s hits to win you back over. And man, these hits are genuinely fantastic. There's no downplaying that. Uh, I'm Tired by Savoy Brown, Bustin' Loose by Funkadelic, and plenty of other songs that I discovered on this soundtrack will stay in my rotations forever. And with Parallel Lines being so easy going, it works as a great catalyst to just kick back, drift around, beat some missions, and enjoy some great tunes. Uh, 70s New York is portrayed here in the same whimsical way that GTA depicts 80s Miami. It's, it's a playground of era-specific music and muscle cars. The story toes that please like me line too. Uh, Terry Kidd opens the game with some Goodfellas style narration about how fun being a wheel man in the 70s was, man, and you noodle around meeting cartoony criminals for the first half of the game. Uh, TK is a lovable goofball stereotype and he's here to take you along for the ride. It's, it, it's, it's a far cry from Tanner's old Hollywood protagonist stoicism. Uh, unfortunately, in line with the game's poor start, it's directionless at first. The cutscenes themselves are fine, they look good for the time, if a bit poorly animated, but the story doesn't feel like it's going anywhere until a bombshell twist midway through the game. TK is thrown in prison for 26 years and released into the modern day, modern day being 2006, and he comes out a grumpy middle-aged man seeking revenge. In the 70s, TK's aviators are tinted orange, and so the game is too. In 2006, they're tinted blue, so everything's a bit blue, and gone is the popular 70s funk in favour of some lesser known alternative tunes. Uh, the newer cars are zippier and corner better, the map's been altered in places to be more modern, and the shift in tone is appropriately dramatic. Generally, from what I've seen, people prefer the 70s era, and with its soundtrack, that's no surprise, but I find the 2006 era to be more compelling because the game finally finds something to focus on. Suddenly, our protagonist has purpose with this Kill Bill-style revenge plot. These 2006 songs aren't the popular hits of 2006, instead they're mostly very angry, edgy, high-energy tracks, and as we're looking at the world through TK's eyes, or his sunglasses rather, uh, the 70s were a fun time for him, so we have some fun music and warm colours, and 2006 was a bitter time of angry music. The 2006 cutscenes exude more style and tension too. Uh, the cutscene of TK going in and out of prison, starting with Neighbourhood Threat by Iggy Pop, and ending with Ceilings by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs is particularly brilliant, as is the brief one where he hunts down an enemy of his in an arcade. Uh, sadly, the tension these cutscenes build is undone by the back-to-back -back shotgunning of comically easy boss battles. These should have been the high points of the game, everything builds up to these campy bosses, but most are literally over in a handful of seconds. I mean, here's an example. They're just very underbaked, and where prior driver games best delivered on these intense, thrilling, high concept missions, Parallel Lines consistently fails to ever surpass being pretty good. In some sense, pretty good is enough, but here's the thing. Uh, I turned off the music for my latest playthrough a handful of times just as a science experiment, and the game crumbled into something really bland and hollow.
Now, this game obviously isn't meant to be played without the music, so maybe this experiment is unfair, but without it, there's barely anything left to hang its hat on. In stripping back most of the things that made the prior games interesting, or most of the things that made Driver Driver, whether that's the handcrafted mission design, or the thrilling challenge of it all, or even the movie homages and thematic depth that those brought with them, and in failing to replace all that stuff with anything other than a banging soundtrack and a decently executed time jump, Drivers lost its purpose. I'd love to dig in deep and analyse parallel lines in the ways that I did with the previous games, but every time you dig below the surface here, there just really isn't any subtext. Uh, it'd be cool if it maybe played with the ideas around TK's perspective more between the eras, or leaned into both 70s and 2000s movie homages, or when you're taking out all your Kill Bill targets, it depicts most of them as these mansion-owning bigwigs that got rich because of TK's downfall, but then it doesn't explore that as a theme any further, opting to stick to its popcorn-y tropes. There's nuggets of themes and directions that parallel lines could have explored or gone in, but it just simply doesn't. An 8 player online multiplayer component was meant to make the final cut, so maybe that would have helped bring another needed layer to the game, but it's hard to picture it being enough. So doing my best to isolate parallel lines as if it wasn't a driver game and judge it by its own merits, it's fine. Pretty good, even. Uh, it's enjoyable enough that I've finished it a handful of times over the years, which I can't say about any Grand Theft Auto games, to be fair. Uh, and I've spoken to people who couldn't get into the older Driver games, but fell in love with this one, and I totally get it, because like this is a fun bout of Hollywood car chases with a soundtrack that's worth the price of admission. And hey, it's the most well-executed example of 180 reverse car shooting gameplay I've ever seen in a video game, so there's that. But at the same time, where Driver 3 dared to enter the ring with the behemoth that was GTA, Parallel Lines held up a white flag from the start and fell back in line with the other GTA clones, taking too much from GTA's design without taking its ambition. Driver 3 is often singled out as the biggest misstep in the franchise, but it really isn't. Uh, the biggest misstep was actually Parallel Lines. Had Reflections and Atari licked their wounds, re-entered the ring, and released Driver 4 on the PS3 and 360 instead as a headlining next-gen release, they could have maintained Driver's reputation of being a bold, top-of-the-line, boundary-pushing, exciting franchise, but instead they played it safe, opting for a cheaper, inoffensive, non-numbered entry releasing on dying consoles to little fanfare. Atari's dire financial situation is probably the reason for all this. If you read between the lines, the parallel lines, if you will, uh, every design decision in parallel lines comes across as an apology. It's so hard to judge parallel lines in isolation because it's an apology for Driver 3, which is annoying because I love Driver 3. Uh, Driver 3 was too much of a high-concept, layered homage to films like Heat and Ronin. Sorry about that, here's a revenge plot about a lovable goofball and some popular tunes instead. Driver 3 was too hard? Well, this game is super easy. It was too glitchy? Well, we've narrowed the complexity down so it's silky smooth. The combat was too hard to control? No worries, just hold the lock-on button and fire. Uh, we've smoothed out and sanded down all the rough edges and corners to the point where it's almost lost Driver's shape. What I'm really trying to say is Driver Parallel Lines is the blobject of the Driver series. It's the new Beetle. Parallel Lines got the 7 out of 10s it strived for, and Atari hit rock bottom for the millionth time because that's what Atari does. So they sold Driver and Reflections to Ubisoft, who released competent enough ports of the game on PC and Wii in 2007, also to little fanfare. And like, 2007 was the year of games like Crisis, COD 4, and Halo 3, and we were only a year away from GTA 4 at that point. Like, they were all games that pushed the boundaries of gaming as a medium, just like the first three driver games strive to, while Parallel Lines fell way behind the curve. 
Reflections being handed over to Ubisoft also meant the original creative director of Driver, Martin Edmondson, could return to the company since his enemy Atari was no longer involved, and so he spearheaded the follow-up and final major Driver game to date, Driver San Francisco. A game that brings back Driver's willingness to push the boundaries, though this time around it was in a bit of a different way. So Parallel Lines just hides in the cross shadow of both the rest of the Driver franchise and of the Grand Theft Auto franchise. I was kind of conflicted writing this video because Parallel Lines is a charismatic, enjoyable enough game. Like, I see posts about how Parallel Lines is hugely underrated and I'm like, yeah, it is underrated, preach it. And then I'll see someone else say that it's garbage and I'm like, yeah, it is garbage, I agree. Like, ultimately, uh, Driver Parallel Lines can be and is both a good game and a disappointing sequel riddled by a strong sense of insecurity. Uh, for a series that up until this point broke all the traffic rules, Driver Parallel Lines drives way too safe. And there we wrap up the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I don't usually love doing negative videos. I don't, I don't like covering games that I don't love. Um, but you know, for completion's sake, I feel like I wanted to talk about this and, and it does sort of mark a very interesting time uh, in this franchise's history. I also want to thank uh, Evo1998, Kilo, Vortex, LeBeige, and Olanov. And I'm sorry I was so harsh on Parallel Lines, but thank you for all your help uh, in researching this video and everything you sent over to me. And uh, yeah, thank you to all my patrons as well. If you want to become a patron, it's sort of the, the best way to support this channel. Uh, so you can subscribe for a dollar a month and I get that dollar and you get videos early and a few other things. So yeah, check that out if you like, but you know, I don't expect you to subscribe. If you don't want to, uh, a good way to help is to, you know, share the video and do the YouTube algorithm. So yeah, cool. Uh, don't have anything else to plug. So great. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.